The streets are teeming with vehicles and the sidewalks are crowded. Skyscrapers, shopping malls, restaurants and bars are illuminated by colorful lights bustling with activity day and night. This is a city that never sleeps. Behind this vibrancy, however, in Hong Kong, people can become trapped by loneliness and despair. The pervasive sadness and depression are eating away at the emotions of many, regardless of age. Loneliness and isolation are heartbreaking realities for many people nowadays. The loss of loved ones, rejection by society or a lack of anyone with whom to share joys and sorrows are common experiences. The famous fast food chain McDonald's has become a popular meeting place. Students find places to read or converse, while young workers seek quick meals for breakfast or lunch. After 11 p.m., when other customers have left, the recognizable red and yellow arches of this fast food restaurant indicate a makeshift home for a certain group of people. Wearing old, worn-out clothes, their faces show signs of the hardships they've been through. Some curl up on the bench, while others take a seated nap due to a lack of space to lie down. Those who haven't slept have a weary look in their eyes. This group of people is known as the Mac Refugees. The danger from which they're attempting to escape is loneliness. Wong has been coming to McDonald's for 10 years now. This Hong Kong McRefugee tells us that he is lonely. Every day he wakes up and goes to work, then he comes to McDonald's to eat and meet friends. He says that everyone at his house is busy and they don't stay home much. Watching TV isn't that enjoyable for him either, so he has to come here. Wong isn't homeless, but it is small and too hot. For him, McDonald's is a much better living space because it has air conditioning with toilets and free Wi-Fi. Most importantly, there are people to chat with, to ease his loneliness. In the big city filled with buildings, roads and people, we are, oddly, becoming more isolated. Loneliness and isolation can slowly torment humans to death. It's more than just psychological pain. Several studies point to the fact that those who feel lonely and isolated have a 20% higher risk of premature death. People who are lonely tend to have weaker immune systems, increasing the risk of heart disease, stroke and dementia. Loneliness is becoming a problem that affects the quality of life of people of all ages, not just the elderly. Many young people are facing this issue as well. Activities and businesses are, however, being launched to combat loneliness. This includes friend or girlfriend rental services. Hashtag PTGF, standing for part-time girlfriends, is the hashtag that many girls here use to communicate with male clients online. A factor that pushes these young girls into the business of providing temporary girlfriend services is loneliness. This high school girl has been offering herself for rent since she was 17. She does this because of her poor relationship with her family. Gigi, who works as a part-time girlfriend, says that she chooses to do it because she's had an argument with her older sister. She isn't very happy, so she wants to find someone to listen to her. From seeking someone to listen and talk to, she found herself drawn into the sex trade, which has now become her source of income. The involvement of young girls in the sex trade here is not solely due to loneliness, though. It's directly related to the pressure of financial problems and the ever-increasing cost of living.
The loneliness experienced by people here is intimately connected and deeply intertwined with economic pressures. Its gross domestic product and the number of billionaires here makes Hong Kong the wealthiest city in the world. Behind the wealth, though, there lies extreme income inequality. Out of the 7 million population, over 1.3 million people earn incomes which are below the poverty line. The number of impoverished people increases each year, along with the rise of the skyscrapers and material prosperity. The biggest single issue for the poor here is housing. The government, who holds the rights to the land, often allocates land to private developers for high-priced property development to boost state revenues. Only a limited amount of land is made available for the building of residential housing for the general public. Given the significant price difference between state housing and private options, many residents seek public housing, leading to limited availability and waiting times of over five years. According to real estate firm CBRE's fifth annual Global Living Report, the average price of a home in Hong Kong in 2019 was over 1.2 million US dollars. When a house is nothing but a dream, some people end up living on the streets and under bridges instead. How long you been living here for? This homeless man in Hong Kong tells us that he's been living under this bridge for about three years. There's no convenience or cleanliness. The area is filled with unpleasant odors, heat, and is overrun by rats and insects. Waiting for a government housing allocation, however, takes many years. Being elderly and impoverished, they simply have nowhere else to go. The homeless person also says that the government doesn't care about people like them. He said that when he applied for public housing from the government in 2009, they told him to wait four years, but he still lives under the bridge. They construct simple makeshift shelters here using whatever materials they can find. These shelters are cluttered with belongings piled high. Inside the small rectangular room fashioned out of scraps of wood and plastic sheets, three old chairs are arranged facing each other. On the other side, there's a piece of wooden furniture used as a bed by all residents. Here, four people live together. Due to the limited space, they take turns lying down to sleep, while the rest sleep sitting upright in the chairs. Many of the homeless people here are elderly. They were once an essential driving force in the nation's economy. They couldn't, however, save enough for retirement, lack family support, or have no grandchildren to take care of them. The state's efforts to help them also fall well short of what is needed. In the final stage of their lives, they rely on free food, donated by owners of nearby restaurants. Food is prepared and placed into boxes every other evening. Those who have enough money and strength come to help prepare meals for the homeless elderly after finishing their work. Rice, vegetables and tofu are all freshly cooked. Despite being in the big city, there is still room for compassion and kindness. The elderly line up to receive their dinners. On the days when food is handed out, it could well be the best meal of the month for them. Chan Shuk Ming, one of the people who gives away free food, explains that he was born into poverty just like many others so he doesn't want to see anyone else suffer from hunger. He believes that in big and wealthy cities, the homeless are ever-present. Considering the living conditions and the ages of these people, it's likely that they will have to endure poverty and loneliness throughout the rest of their lives. The number of homeless people in Hong Kong increases every year, a stark example of this is the growing number of people living under bridges and the rising number of refugees. 
A survey conducted in 2013 found only 57 people in Hong Kong had resorted to sleeping in McDonald's. According to a survey conducted in June 2018 by the Junior Chamber International Taiping Shan, however, there has been an approximately six-fold increase in such individuals dispersed over the 120 locations of the 24-hour McDonald's branches in Hong Kong. Not all McRefugees are homeless, though. More than half of them are employed, but don't earn enough to afford rent. Approximately 70% either rent flats or own a house, but choose to stay and or sleep in McDonald's. There are simple differences between homeless individuals and housed McRefugees. Those carrying large bags of belongings are likely to be homeless while those arriving with few or no belongings like Wong may have a home. They choose not to stay there due to its small size, heat and loneliness. <laughs> Wong says that it is his own choice to stay at McDonald's. He doesn't know where else to go and he doesn't want to sleep in a public park. For him, McDonald's is a good place because he can shelter from the sun and rain. Here is definitely more comfortable than under a bridge or in cramped rooms. It's open 24 hours with air conditioning, seating areas with tables, chairs and upholstered long benches for sleeping. The food prices are reasonable as well compared to many other eateries and Wong's favourite menu item is the fish burger. <laughs> He tells us that he used to enjoy ordering Big Macs, but now he eats them less often after finding out that he has high blood pressure. He prefers to order fish or egg and sausage burgers now. On average, each McDonald's branch will see approximately six Mac refugees. This number tends to increase during the hot season as people seek refuge to sleep and enjoy the cool air conditioning. It is common to see people sitting for hours at tables, and some even fall asleep on the chairs or lie on the long benches. Wong says that he frequently encounters cleaning staff and he greets them every time they come to collect trays and wipe tables. He says that he doesn't often chat with the cashiers because they'll be annoyed if he doesn't buy anything. The cleaning staff are always kind to him, though. Some Mug refugees are not Hong Kong locals. Behind the beautiful high-rise buildings and modern housing structures exists the sweat of foreign workers. High labour costs and insufficient human resources have forced Hong Kong to import labour for various sectors in the economy. When their strength fades and illness strikes, however, they have nowhere else to turn. This Nepalese man has been living in McDonald's for over two years after falling ill and becoming unable to work, forcing him out of his small rented room. You, you don't have job right now, right? Yeah, right now it's no job. Uh, too, too many people sleep here, one sleep outside. That's all. Uh, today, I'm not going to the uh, room, my friend room. Today, I sleep in the McDonald's. By becoming a McRefugee, he is categorized as homeless, lacking both financial resources and the mental fortitude to sustain life. Is that cold? Yeah, I'm feeling cold. Really? Yeah, a little, little bit cold. It's okay. So you have anything like no blanket? No, no. No? No. So how do you sleep at night when it's cold? Just feeling the cold, but no blanket. No need. Do you want to have home? Hmm? Do you want to have home? Home? Mm. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you.
This fast food chain has over 120 branches in Hong Kong and has become a refuge for those with low incomes, homeless individuals and solitary people in the big city. McDonald's in Hong Kong is well aware of this fact and hasn't adopted any special measures regarding these regular customers. As long as they come in to order food without causing trouble or disturbing others, they're allowed to use the restaurant space according to their needs. Despite choosing to stay at McDonald's, Wong explains that even though he has a fan at home, it is still hot there. He enjoys being in the air-conditioned restaurant and meeting friends here. He says that he used to pay a lot for electricity. If he kept the air conditioning on all day at home, he couldn't afford to pay for it. Making money wasn't easy in the past, he says. The story of McRefugees in Hong Kong gained wider attention after there was a news report of an elderly homeless woman who passed away while dozing at a table in a McDonald's branch in 2015. This shocking news did not, however, occasion any significant changes. The number of McRefugees has continued to rise, especially among regular nighttime visitors. Despite Wong's poverty and lack of family, he has not reached the point of living under a bridge or relying on donated food. But refugees may feel lonely and isolated at times, but they haven't reached the depths of despair. At the very least, they have friends to talk to and comfortable seating in cool air where they can rest. Here in McDonald's, Wong manages to get through his tough and solitary days. He tells us that McDonald's is like his home. He comes here almost every day because if he stays at home, he gets so lonely. The urban environment significantly impacts people's moods and emotions. As we look up from our mobile phones, we find ourselves surrounded by crowds on subway trains. On the streets, traffic is congested and pedestrians navigate crowded sidewalks amidst towering skyscrapers in every direction. Big cities exert pressure on people, leaving them feeling tense and rushed rather than relaxed. No one feels connected to anyone else. Despite being surrounded by people, we are becoming increasingly isolated. <laughs>